This is going to be a brief overview of editing and saving an image in FilterStorm 3 on iPad. Let's begin by loading a photo. FilterStorm 3's interface is broken down into these buttons and tabs. From top to bottom, we have Load Image, Automations, Star Rating Slider. This one's a visual history of the edits you've made. App Info, Export tab, Metadata, Filters, and Canvas. Let's start with cropping in the Canvas tab. So here you can enter in, in these boxes, your own ratio, 1 to 1 or 4 to 3, whatever you like. Or if you can just tap the uh, cross crop button, and it will default to the uh, current ratio. So here you can pinch to zoom, and you can swipe to position the image. You can also move around the borders ma manually, or use one of the preset ratios. And when you hit the check button, it will crop to what's ever within the lines. So we'll just do that right now. Scale to fit is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you put in dimensions and pixels, and it will make sure the image fits inside of a box of that, uh, of that size while being as large as possible. So if you put in 3,000 by 3,000, it would make this long side 3,000 pixels and this shorter side 2,000 or 2,500, whatever the ratio was. Rotate and flip, it's 90 degrees and vertically and horizontally. This is a straightening tool if your horizon is off. The borders tool here lets you add a colored border, also lets you uh, change the size of this drop shadow on the image, and you can change the colors of the border or the, uh, the border or the outline. You can also turn the outline on and off here and apply it. Canvas size lets you adjust the area of the image without scaling it. Uh, and if you make it larger, you can set the color of the new canvas. And this is a regular scaling tool that will scale to the exact dimensions you enter. Now let's go to filters. Uh, before we start applying these, I'm just going to go into my history here. You can see everything we've done so far. And just go back to the beginning and tap on that to revert to the initial state. Let's look at brightness contrast. So you see we have these sliders on the side. Most of the filters use these sliders. You can just pull them up and down and you'll get a preview. Uh, many of the filters have live previews. Some of them you have to, uh, once you release your uh, finger, it'll generate the preview. Uh, the settings button is here. You can set to preview only on the right side, for example, or only on the left side. I'll just keep it on the entire image right now. And you can change the contrast however you like. Uh, I don't actually want to do this right now, so I'm just going to use the cancel button up here, apply buttons down here. And I'm going to go to curves, which is something I do want to use. Um, so I'm going to first set uh, the curves for the background of this image, the sky. Um, if you don't know how to use curves, there is some text documentation uh, on the website. It's a bit involved to go into in the video, so I suggest you read it. Uh, I'm going to change this to RGB curves. I'm going to tap the add point button, then tap on the curve control to add the point. So this is about what I want, but you can see that uh, if this is what I do, then I lose all the detail in the uh, in the skydivers, and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is uh, instead of using the apply button, I'm going to use the mask button here. It's the one with the picture of a brush, and we enter our masking mode. So now we can use uh, all these masking tools. We have brushes and various things, which I'll go into right now. Um, so the first one is simply, it lets you swipe and zoom in like that freely without editing the image. Second one is the brush. We can set the hardness of the brush and the opacity and the size, and it will scale if you zoom in. So if it's, uh, if it's big and I zoom in, it'll be slightly smaller when I zoom in. Uh, let's just erase all of those no, because I didn't want to do any of that. The gradient tool. Uh, 
have a bunch of different sorts of gradients, circular and various linear gradients. Save that for later. This is a color range tool. It'll select the color beneath this loop and it will apply the adjustments to everything that's similar to that color. So here it gets mostly the parachute, here it gets mostly the sky. Also not going to use that right now. Opacity tool, this is a simple slider. Vignette tool allows you to apply the, a vignette, uh, a circular vignette as the mask. You can set the fall off. But what I do want to do is go back to the gradient tool and use this uh, inverse circular gradient. Set it there so we get this nice fading and the bright point is near the focal point of the image, which is what we want. So I'll just go ahead and add that to the mask. I'll zoom in here and just to make sure that they don't get too dark, I'm just going to quickly erase it a little bit from them just to keep things a bit brighter. And I'll apply that. Now let's go back into the curves and this time instead of going for the background, I'm going to uh, use luminance curves and set it for the parachute, just make it really contrasty like that, you know, make it pop. So I'll just go back to my masking tools, go to my brush, and I can just start brushing. If you like, you can uh, come to the settings here and show the mask as a color and paint it on like this. Sometimes useful to make sure you don't go over anywhere or to make sure you've erased everything you want. But normally I prefer to work with just the blended mask. If you go too far, you can just take your eraser and fix your mistake like this. Uh, so once I'm done, I can just apply that. Um, there's a bunch of spots here I could remove with the cloning tool, but I'm going to do that uh, as a separate video. Uh, and right now just skip ahead to exporting. So here's uh, the export tab. You can see there's settings. We can set the maximum processing side smaller. It's going to be a faster processing time, smaller image, of course. Uh, and you can set the JPEG quality. And you can also scale it at the uh, time of export. So if you select photo library, will save to uh, the camera roll on the iPad and email will bring up an email sheet. You can select both and save it to the camera roll and bring up an email sheet. I guess I'll do that right now and just tap the send photo button. That'll reprocess. Uh, this will take longer on your actual iPad. Uh, I'm doing this on the simulator, which will process it much faster because computers much faster, but it's not too bad. And it'll, so now it's saved to the library. It's brought up the email sheet and we're done.